The grand final is the pinnacle of our sport, and we often hear about the joy the players have in battling it out for the most coveted prize. But we cannot forget about the players who have missed out on being a part of the glory, whether it be through omission, injury, or suspension leading up to the big day. Often it can be a complicated, hollow feeling, filled with mixed emotions as a player watches their teammates celebrate long into the night a grand final win that they were not a part of. In this video, we are not talking about champion players who were unable to win a premiership. Former superstars like Robert Harvey, Gary Ablett Sr., Nathan Buckley and many others may be considered unlucky, but that's for a different list. This list will talk about the players who were a big part of their team's successful season, but missed out on playing in the big game. Surprisingly, there have been well over a dozen players to have played every single game of the season except the Premiership winning side. We will go through some of the notable ones in this video, as well as some other infamous stories. I'm Jackson from Off The Play, and here are the unluckiest players to miss out on a VFL AFL Grand Final. Starting with arguably the most notorious grand final snub, and that was Essendon coach Kevin Sheedy's decision to omit Derek Kickett from the 1993 Premiership winning team. Upon hearing of the decision, Kickett immediately walked out on the club and allegedly did not even watch the grand final or celebrate with his teammates. People point to Kickett's lack of form coming into the grand final, having only had a total of 15 possessions and one goal from his previous three games combined but omitting the talented Ford was still a massive call considering he had played every single game of the season and booted 38 goals including a bag of 8 against Footscray just a month prior. Kickett played 68 more AFL games for Sydney and finally got his chance at a grand final playing in the Swans' loss to North Melbourne in 1996. Kickett and Sheedy did not speak to each other until 2018, some 25 years later, but it was great to see them reconcile after all those years. Time heals all wounds, hey? Troy Bond was another player who did not take kindly to being dropped for a grand final. Bond was omitted from Carlton's 1995 Premiership winning team after featuring in the previous week's prelim and playing 15 games for the Blues that season. Bond reportedly travelled home to Adelaide on the day before the grand final without saying a word to coach David Parkin or any of his teammates. Parkin later expressed regret with how he handled the situation, stating in an article on SEM, the easiest way for me, the gutless horror, was to give the 22 players a team sheet with their name on it and give me the 20 other blokes they wanted to go over the top with on the weekend. I don't know the actual figures, but I think Troy got his own vote and not too many others, which was a tragedy for him. Parkin said he had not spoken to Bond since 1995. Bond went on to play a further 58 AFL games for Adelaide and was a member of their 1997 Premiership. One player who did not play for the Crows that afternoon, or in either of Adelaide's back-to-back -back premierships of the late 90s, was the incredibly unlucky Tony Modra. The first flag he missed was due to an ACL he injured during the first quarter of the prelim. He had played every single game of the season up to that point, and his injury forced Crows coach Malcolm Blight to famously move the game-winning hero, Darren Jarman, up forward. Many Crows fans believe had Modra had not gotten injured, it would have in fact been the Western Bulldogs facing St Kilda in the 1997 Grand Final. The following year, in 1998, Modra played the qualifying final when the Crows were flogged by Melbourne, but couldn't get near it and was subsequently dropped and spent the next three finals games on the sideline. Some other notable players who played every single game of the season but missed the Premiership were Peter Knights in 1971, who was injured, David O'Halloran, also from Hawthorne, in 1978. An interesting side note to O'Halloran's story was that in 1985 he achieved the exact opposite of this, where his one and only game of the season was the grand final loss to Essendon. And North Melbourne's Jason McCartney was suspended from the 1999 grand final after rearranging the nose of Clark the September specialist Keating. Before we get to my opinion of the single most unlucky player ever, we will go through a few more honourable mentions. Neville Crowe missed Richmond's 1967 Premiership after a decade of captaincy at the club after he was controversially suspended in the second semi-final for striking Carlton legend John Nichols. Ron McEwen famously had his ankles strapped for the 1990 Grand Final before Collingwood coach Lee Matthews told him he wasn't playing. McEwen gave a great account of this story on his appearance on Mike Sheehan's Open Mic. Matthew Armstrong played 18 games for North Melbourne in 1996, including the prelim, but was omitted for their grand final winning team. 
Matthew Kennedy, a loyal servant of the Brisbane Football Club, played his 188th and last game for the club in the 2001 preliminary final before being dropped for the big one and never featuring for the Lions again. Stuart Cochran played most of the 2004 season for Port Adelaide but was dropped for the team at the beginning of their successful final series. And Jamie Graham played all 24 games leading up to the 2006 grand final for West Coast but was left out of the premiership winning team. So, which player was the most hard done by from the selection committee? Well, I believe that the title of the single most unlucky player to have ever been dropped for a grand final belongs to Carlton's Greg Kennedy from the 1972 season. Kennedy, a forward from Bendigo, was enjoying a terrific debut season at Carlton. He finished the minor rounds with goal tallies of 8, 12 and 5. So, you would think if you finished the year with 25 goals in 3 games, finishing with 76 in total for the season, your spot would be safe? Well, not for Kennedy. He produced three consecutive subpar finals performances and was left out of the Blues' 1972 grand final shootout win against Richmond. 76 goals for the season, dropped for the granny. Wowee. This list would not be complete without mentioning Chris Threadgold being omitted from Sturt's Sandful Premiership winning team of 2002. At the time, Threadgold was the captain of the Double Blues and had recently tied the record as the club's longest serving skipper. The solidly built, reliable defender was once described as the heart and soul of the Double Blues, having amassed 223 senior games and a Sturt jumper to that point. However, Threadgold was controversially omitted from the team which meant Central District in the 2002 Grand Final. Sturt broke a 26-year flag drought and the rest is history. It was a sad end to an otherwise outstanding career at Sandful level for Threadgold. And that's our list. Please let us know in the comments any unlucky players we may have missed out on. Do not forget to subscribe to Off The Play and thanks very much for watching.